to boldly grow where no lentil has grown before. That's my catchy title designed to attract fans from Star Trek. This title might be more precise, albeit more boring description of what I was trying to evaluate. The effect of row spacing, seeding rate, and fungicide on small red lentil production in the black soil zone. Yorkton, Saskatchewan is in the black soil zone and we're not known for our lentils. However, with lentil prices hovering around 46 cents a pound last winter, many producers were wondering if we could be. Our climate is generally too moist for lentils, which causes them to grow rank and succumb to diseases such as anthracnose and ascochyta. I wanted to know if we could slow the progression of disease and increase lentil yield by increasing row widths, decreasing seeding rates, and applying fungicide. I'll have the answer for you in just a moment after these messages from our sponsor. Eh, I'm just kidding. Let's hope I never go there. So, before we get to our trial results, let's review what others have observed in terms of seeding rate and row spacing. Publications from the Saskatchewan Pulse Growers and Saskatchewan Ministry of Agriculture are recommending 130 seeds per meter squared. However, there has been some evidence suggesting this rate is too low. Robin Bowness is a pulse research scientist in Alberta. She led some studies across five soil zones and found the optimum seeding rate to be closer to 160 seeds per meter squared. Steve Shirtliff with the University of Saskatchewan evaluated seeding rates of 60 to 320 seeds per meter squared for a variety of lentil types. Preliminary findings observed higher yields with 180 seeds per meter squared in both wet and dry years. For some, like the red lentil class, seeding rates up to 240 seeds per meter squared were required for optimum yields. Yikes. Now let's look at row spacing. Dr. Manjula Bandera is a pulse research scientist with Alberta Agriculture. He looked at row spacings of 8, 10, and 12 inches and found the highest yields were associated with wider row spacings when conditions were wet and with narrower row spacings when conditions were dry. With Steve Shirtliff's work, row spacings less than 12 inches were showing increases in crop yield. So let's see how our results during a moist growing season compare. So our trial looked at three factors. The first factor compared 10 inch versus 20 inch row spacings. We wanted to know what a really wide row spacing for lentils would do in a moist environment. The second factor compared seeding rates of 160 and 260 seeds per meter squared. The actual emergence rates are somewhat less than this, particularly for the wider row spacings. But this is expected as increasing row spacing increases the number of seeds within the row and the interplant competition. The third factor was fungicide. Fungicide treatments included a no fungicide check, preaxor at the beginning of flowering, and then a dual application with preaxor at the beginning of flower, followed five days later with headline. So before I get to the results, I just want to give you a sense of what the growing conditions were like in 2016. Environmental conditions were conducive to vegetative growth and lentils easily filled in the canopy, even on the 20 inch row spacing. Here we have examples of 10 and 20 inch row spacings on June 28. Two weeks later, the 20 inch row spacing is just filling in. You can see the canopy on the 20 inch row spacing is more filled in with 260 seeds per meter squared. The 10 inch row spacing filled in probably 10 days earlier than this picture was taken. Two days after this picture was taken, the first fungicide application of Preaxor was applied. All right, now finally for some results. Disease severity of anthracnose and ascochyta were rated together on July 28. A visual rating of zero means no observed disease and a rating of 10 means completely diseased and flat to the ground. If we look at the main effects, disease severity was lowest and yield was highest 
when row spacing was increased to 20 inches, seeding rate was reduced to 160 seeds per meter squared, and a dual application of fungicide was applied. Obviously, a thinner canopy produced less disease and was of value during the moist conditions of 2016. However, the benefit of applied fungicide depended on row spacing and seeding rate. Thus, the individual treatment means have been produced in the next figure. So here we're looking at the impact of applied fungicide on disease severity for all the different row spacing seeding rate combinations. If you focus on the bottom row, you can clearly see yield is increasing as more fungicide is applied. However, the yield increase is more moderate for the thinnest canopy produced by the 20 inch row spacing and 160 seeds per meter squared. Disease levels were relatively low in this canopy, so the application of fungicide only made modest improvements in disease severity and yield. The heaviest canopy was produced by 10 inch row spacing and 260 seeds per meter squared. This treatment had the highest level of disease. Surprisingly, little impact of fungicide on disease severity could be observed with this canopy. There was a significant yield increase with fungicide on this canopy nonetheless, but yields could not be brought up to the level attained by the thinner canopies. As for the mid-range canopies, there was a good correlation between decreasing levels of disease and increasing yield. The thing to note here is that the 20 inch row spacing is not required to maximize yield. The maximum yield was achieved at 10 inch row spacing provided seeding rate did not exceed 160 seeds per meter squared and dual application of fungicide was applied. So, in conclusion, highest yields 22.6 bushels per acre were associated with wide row spacings of 20 inches and low seeding rates of 160 seeds per meter squared and the dual application of fungicide. In contrast, the lowest yield, 12.5 bushels per acre, was associated with narrow row spacings, 10 inches, and heavy seeding rates of 260 seeds per meter squared and no fungicide. Seeding rate and fungicide had the largest effects on disease severity and yield because you could still maximize yield, 22.9 bushels per acre, on a 10 inch row spacing provided you did not exceed 160 seeds per meter squared and dual application of fungicide was applied. In consideration of past work, we may need to come up with different recommendations for the soil zones. Wider row spacings and lower seeding rates may be more appropriate in moisture climates. In 2016 though, Steve Shirtliff didn't find a benefit to high seeding rates either. He said he had never seen lentils grow so vegetatively before. The canopy is easily filled in which was more conducive to disease than normal. Well there you have it, that's my first lentil trial. Should we grow lentils in our area? Well it looks like it can be done but you may need to manage the crop differently from traditional areas that grow lentils.